Welcome back to Talkville, folks. The ultimate Smallville rewatch podcast. Uh, hey, we're coming to the end of the season. If you're still digging this, man, if you're still digging us, if you're still digging calling the hotline and getting cool merch and coming to cons and wearing the awesome merch like Hand Blast and damn, who's that? If you're enjoying this like we are, I urge you to uh, keep watching, spread the word. We want to continue this and uh, join Patreon. Join Patreon to support the podcast, uh, patreon.com slash talkville. And uh, there's a lot of perks and you help the podcast. It's up to you. So thank you for all and that. It's a lo- and it's a lot of fun for us. We, I, we just went to a con this past weekend and there were at least six patrons there. And they're like, I'm a patron. And it's like, well, what's your handle? And well, it's kind of fun to talk to them. Dude, the one in DC was awesome. We had a blast at that one. We had like 30 patrons. We had a hang. We bought some beers for everybody. So anyway, join Patreon and um, help the podcast. We love you, Tom. Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you too. Ryan, good to, good see, to you. see you. All of you. Hey, everybody. We're hoping the lighting's better now. We changed the lighting a little bit. We made it a little, uh, you know, hopefully it's a little more crystal clear. I see more of a shadow behind you when you move your head, but it's nothing that you have to stop about. Yeah, it's not on that camera, though. You're just, you're seeing me through the Zoom. Oh, that's true. You're not seeing me through the other. Our socials are Talkville Podcast and all socials. Uh, support us there. Talkville Podcast if you want to get awesome merch. Tom and I have these new prints which I just had Tom sign in DC, uh, this amazing artist, 55 prints. Once they're gone, they're gone. We might even sell the uh, original print, but get them. There are only 55 of them and they're gone. The last one sold out. So make sure you get that on Talkville podcast, along with tons of other stuff. Um, if you didn't get a chance to call in our hotline, leave a question for the episode, make sure you do it on future ones. Um, 213 jet cute. If I say um again, I'm going to kill myself. All that more in the show's description. You can go to my Instagram link tree and find out Cameo, where Tom and I are going for cons and all other stuff, including the Inside of You online store, which has a other merch stuff that Talkville podcast doesn't. Uh, without further ado, let's get into season two, episode 18. This one's called Truth. Title's Truth aired April 21st, 2004. Director James Marshall. So you know there was a lot of takes involved in this one. <laughs> Writers Drew Z. Greenberg. Never heard of him until this moment right here. Never heard of Drew Greenberg. But maybe he was a freelance. Maybe he wrote a cool episode. I don't know. Uh, the guest stars Linda Banks as lab technician. Andrew Francis as William T- Taylor. Don Thompson as Jack Cole. Mark Houghton as Jonah Doyle. And Samantha Benton as Nurse Seaman. Seenan. Seenan. In an attempt to save her father's career, Chloe unlocks a new power that improves her journalistic abilities, but in turn puts a deadly target on her back. You know, from the get go, I was like, I'm not going to like this episode. This is just going to be a bunch. And I turned out actually not hating it. We'll get into it. But did you guys kind of feel that? I was just sort of like, what's happening? And, and very quickly when, you know, Chloe gets into Luther Corp pretty easily. And I think the truth about this episode is that security at Luther Corp is not existent. I mean, she literally walks in, runs around, breaks some stuff and runs back out the way she came in. Yeah, that's where I kind of like, you know, you suspend disbelief. But sometimes you're like, first of yeah. all, she's slow. She runs awkwardly. It's Chloe. She's a journalist. <laughs> she's not an Olympic runner. I just don't believe that out of this whole clinic, she's going to escape that. But maybe they wanted her to. You know, I don't know. I I like the way I I did like the way that the end it kind of comes around that just because you have an ability doesn't mean you know you can't just use it however you want selfishly as she does in this episode. Yeah, and hopefully she hurts a lot of people in the process. Um, well, we'll get there. This episode opens with Chloe meeting her father's old co-worker. Thank goodness it's immediately addressed that she isn't driving her normal VW Bug. She talks about her father being black bailed, bald. Uh, by Luther Corp. As he leaves, Chloe steals his Luther Corp clearance card and decides to break in to try to get her dad a job again. I mean, why didn't the guy just call in and say, I think she stole this card, so be on the lookout for some girl. But anyway, inside the lab, Chloe gets startled, locked into a secured room, blasted, not hand blasted, from the ceiling by a mysterious green gas. Security is no match for Chloe as she's able to use mission impossible light maneuvers to break out before being apprehended. The next day, Chloe and Clark talk in the school halls, and Chloe urges him to seek the truth as a journalist. She pushes Clark to conduct an interview with the teacher that he has been pushing off. 
Clark talks to the teacher and she denies the request, but then Chloe talks to her and sends green molecules mouth to mouth, causing the teacher to tell an embarrassing truth about why she won't do the interview. Chloe's I was got waiting for hours. I was waiting for a Listerine ad somewhere in there. <laughs> like the green things going out. Yeah. I was like, is this a bad breath episode? What's the truth here? Or like Orbit Gum, remember those? Yeah. Yeah. Dirty yeah. mouth. Orbit it's up. Gum. I did a commercial for Bite the burst. Only burst gum freshens your mouth long. Bite the burst. Bite the burst. Burst gum. I think I did that. I did Trojan condoms. Get real. <laughs> yeah, I did Magnavox. Yeah, you, back in the day. And now I don't book any voiceover work except uh, nothing. No, nothing. Wait, can, can someone answer? Did they, the toxin that was released in the lab is the same like experimental drug like th that they release in emergencies they release the thing that they're working on into the i don't right? know wasn't that like an emergency like Tom? trigger response am i wrong uh you know what i just assumed it was a it, i i didn't catch that i thought it was just a truth serum which ultimately in the next episode becomes a different sort of you know this is the first part of it but do they release it every it was, time was, they're broken into is that that's what i was confused about uh, i don't no, because remember, she went there not to get her dad a job again, but the guy said that Lex is working on things that people should stay away from, and I think that's why she goes, and that's what she gets sprayed with. That's why I take away. They head into the torch to, to talk to Pete about the guy's date night watching the game. Pete suddenly starts to tell Chloe about Clark's supersonic speed, and Clark looks on shocked, forced to tell Chloe that Pete's <laughs> kidding. I was like, oh, oh Lord. I, I like the way Clark... Clark's like, she's kidding, right? Get, get out of here. You know what I would have done? I wouldn't have said she's kidding. I would have just gone, <laughs> Pete, amazing dude. That's hilarious, bro. Instead of like, he's kidding, obviously. Like, you look guilty, but yeah, that's the line that that's was given you. That night in Metropolis, Lex drops by his father's office, learns about the breach at the Smallville plant. Lionel is concerned about a certain chemical agent being released, and Lex is annoyed that his father is micromanaging. Lionel then con becomes convinced that his son is hiding things from him. That was kind of an intimate conversation, wasn't it, when I just kind of walk up to his face and, you know, John talk, uh, taught me how to be a close talker. <laughs> Lex, son. Son? Lex, son. Lex, son, he says that so many <laughs> times. Back in Smallville, Chloe stops by the Kens to finish her project with Clark. Martha walks in with groceries, and Clark goes to finish up unloading his car, leaving Chloe alone with mom. And as they talk, Martha begins truth bombing about Jonathan's ailment and Jarrell's involvement. Again, I thought she did a great job. It was interesting in this episode that you have characters telling the truth instead of trying to lie. Yeah. And I thought everybody did a good job yeah. of saying it and then being like, that is true, you know, instead of like, oh, no, no, no. The thing is, though, we'll get to it, but like at the end, Chloe remembers everything. She remembers oh, she? everything she did. And I thought for sure she was going to forget, which Ryan probably loved <clears throat> that they all didn't forget and everything's fine. It's like, wait a minute, Chloe knows some stuff and she's responsible for a lot of shit. That is weird. Because a lot of the times when they're all hopped up on K. Yeah. yeah. K, red K. <laughs> on the K. You know, they forget everything they did. But she, yeah, it's weird that she remembered everything. Yeah. Hmm. Clark heads to the town and interrupts Lana, who's dreaming about a trip to Paris. The two have been distant since their last talk about Clark, how Clark is holding her back from the world. Their convo's ended by Lana tipping off Clark that one of Chloe's father's old co-workers was suspicious that his clearance badge was stolen. And the next day, Smallville High... The same teacher from earlier, Mrs. Taylor, gets confronted by Chloe for her interview. She interviews, or, or she agrees, and then goes on to tell a wild story about how she falsified her name to cover up her past as a domestic terrorist. <laughs> Seems par for the course for a Smallville faculty member. Good Lord! <laughs> this teacher's effed! you think she would have said, one time, I failed the student just because I didn't like him. No. Yeah. It was like dark crazy stuff you're right i didn't see it coming and it just kept coming i was like, just son's like i was like what? whoa yes i did this and i was a terrorist group and we didn't plan on this but we had a bomb at a bank and i'm like oh my lord also i'm cheating <laughs> on your father yes i'm cheating on your yeah yeah exactly. <laughs> well mrs taylor is so sorry 
because that's what they say in Canada. Yeah, Sorry. Right. She did say that. Chloe is grinning ear to ear after breaking this news story. Clark confronts her about breaking into Luther Corp and using her powers. Chloe embraces the truth powers and goes throughout the halls, getting different Canadians to admit embarrassing truths. <laughs> oh, so you how many drinking and driving did you have? Oh, I went for a rip the other night, got a DUI. Then turns to Clark and asks him what he's hiding. I don't think this is ever addressed why her powers don't work on Clark, but I understand it because there's been other stuff where the mind games and like, you know, remember when Ryan couldn't read into Clark's future, you know, he came, mm -hmm. he's like, I can't, there's something about you. There's Clark has a different brain chemistry. So I get it. Later, Clark breaks in a small Voluther Corp lab to find out what is going on with Chloe. He's interrupted by Lex, who's suspicious why Clark is breaking and entering. Lex questions why Clark didn't tell him about Chloe breaking in and then tells Clark that he's been trying to salvage Lionel's old experiments. I wanted Lex to circle back at the end of the scene and be like, Okay, but seriously, Clark, what are you doing here? Yeah. Like, you're just here? Don't you wish they could just say, hey, Clark, get the f*** out of here. <laughs> what, the, what are you doing? You're in high school. Get out of here. I'm, th this is a personal matter. What are you involved? 16-year-old boy. Bleep my f mom. Back in Smallville, Chloe is getting this cold shoulder from her classmates after besmirching a beloved teacher including the son of Mrs. Taylor, who gets up in her face about exposing his mom. She uh, goes to talk to Lana, who starts truth bombing about wanting to join a high school uh, school program in France, since she has no family and doesn't feel very included in the Sullivan household because they think she's too self-involved. It was kind of a weird response. It just, I was like, well, that's not even that bad. Why is she upset? Why aren't you telling me? Why did you tell me this, Lana, that you're considering? Who cares? <laughs> who cares? Do you care? I didn't care. No. I thought that Lana scene was just Bohr State University. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was interesting because oh, Chloe's... Here we, here we go. Just listen for one goddamn second. <laughs> no, it was just her, her powers were back, backfiring on her, and she wasn't really expecting that because she's been getting all these truth bombs. She got that mom to confess to crimes in the 70s, and now she's got her best friend. <laughs> um yeah, basically saying like that, uh, yeah, we're not cool. And she wouldn't have said that had Chloe not uh, spewed green truth in her face. Yeah. You know, I, I, journalists in general aren't very likable. There aren't many. You know, um, do you know a lot? Well, just think about it. There's, I mean, out there, their goal is to get stuff on you, to get yeah. people to read and get attention. Their whole thing is now if you're finding trying to find a real story and all that, that's but a lot of times they write these reviews to try and um sure. humiliate or you know, they think they yeah, know more than everybody else. And do you remember that Rolling Stone guy from season one? Mm -hmm. The Rolling Stone interviewer was just like secretly trying to tape us talking to him and like asking like very personal questions yeah. and like he was that he was said one of my some things first I remember in Rolling Stone that I was like I didn't say anything bad, but there was a couple of things in there that I, I said. And I was like, oh, my God, he, t he turned those. But that's yeah. what they do. Chloe stops by Luther Mansion. They so also get real stories, too. But that, yeah, we're, that's we're, true. We're not here to talk There's about some that. good journalists, but they're also a pain in it, the ass. Like, you want to become friends with a journalist? You have to. E either way you spin it, if you're there to get dirt or if you're there to get like the truth, you have to be an asshole. There's there's no. <laughs> I'm I'm sort of a journalist in a way. I interview people, and I, I, I don't you know want to humiliate them. I'll edit whatever they do. I have a soul, conscience. A conscience. <laughs> Instead of being angry for her breaking into his lab, Lex wants the truth. He wants her to use her truth powers to help him recover the weeks that were stolen from him while in Belle Reve. Chloe is resistant because Lex fired his father. Lex tells her that it was Lionel who wanted this to happen and then tells her that the only thing he truly wants from his father is Lerv. A whole lot of Lerv. Betterhelp.com slash Talkville. Uh, yeah. Uh, that was. I think I, I think this moment helped shock out some blocked memories that Lex had that we learn about in the next episode. You know, that I remember that scene because it was hard to say because it felt cheesy, but it also felt like it's exactly like you know not to get into inside of you with Michael Rosenbaum here, but like I used a lot of this stuff with my relationship with Lionel. I used you know a lot of stuff that I grew up with or didn't have. So when he's like, all I want from my father is love. And it was like, it was kind of like sad. He said the truth, but 
it was still hard for him to get that out, but it was the truth. Um, I don't know. I kind of like that. Talkville is brought to you by Policy Genius. Uh, you know, the holidays are here. Uh, they're a time to reflect on family traditions and, and looking forward to the future. And um, they not only allow us to spend time with family, but a reminder of how important our responsibility to protect them is. And that includes planning to secure their future. Life insurance is an easy way to give your family peace of mind. It provides a safety net. So if something were to happen to you, your family can cover expenses while getting back on their feet. Luckily, Policy Genius helps you compare your options from top companies and their team of licensed experts are on hand to help talk you through it. Now, Tom, we talk about this stuff, but yeah. you know, I don't think people talk about it enough. Uh, if you don't have life insurance and you have a family, it's they're grieving over your loss. And yeah. you know, it's a hard thing to talk about, but if like, you know, the last thing you want them to do is really be stressed out more than they need to be. Well, I, we have a we have family friends who it just came out uh, on a on a holiday vacation that um, they didn't have life insurance and it was a thing for for the wife obviously and I would looked at him and I kind of pulled him aside later and I'm like dude I'm I know it's gonna sound weird but I do this podcast and if like you really don't have it check out Policy Genius and he was like no no I'm like just look at it. And he literally called me up two weeks later and he goes, dude, I got some good information from them. Thank you. Because it was a, it's delicate. It's something people don't want to talk about, you know, but uh, it helped him out. Yeah, it's important. Um, you know, I can't imagine if something happens to me, if I have, you know, if I have family and, you know, they're not taken care of or they don't have ways to handle the expenses for funeral costs and whatever. And they have or to even your, even your estate, you know. Yeah. It, it can affect that too. I don't know if that's applicable, but it can affect the what you leave behind in general. Absolutely. If you already have life insurance policy through work, it may not offer enough protection for your family's needs, and it may not follow you if you leave your job. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just two hundred ninety-two dollars a year for a million dollars of coverage. Some options offer same-day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius knows how valuable your time is. Their technology makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from America's top insurers in just a few clicks to find your lowest price. Policy Genius has licensed award winning agents who can help you find the best fit for your needs, and they work for you, not the insurance companies. It means they don't have an incentive to recommend one insurer over another so you can trust their guidance. Policy Genius is for parents, caregivers, and anyone else who has people who depend on them. They simplify the process of getting life insurance so you can protect the people you love. And no wonder they have thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot. Your family deserves peace of mind. A life insurance policy through Policy Genius can give it to them. Head to policygenius.com or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com. Talkville is brought to you by AG1. There's a reason why you're hearing me talk about AG1. It's because I love it. Tom loves it. We all love it. Bob Knudsen, who's a, uh, a a listener, a patron, he came up to me at a con. And he's like, you know what? I tried not taking it. And I go, yeah. And he goes, not good. I was taking it yeah. so consistently. And then I stopped and I noticed the difference. So now he's back on to taking it. It's like an invest. It's an investment in yourself. Like when you take it in the morning, you're already setting yourself up for success for the day i agree it's like a routine man yeah. and when i started drinking ag1 i just noticed a difference i could feel the difference in my health i had energy um i felt more relaxed which i need i could focus which is hard for me um ag1 is a foundational nutrition supplement that helps support your body's universal needs like gut optimization stress management and immune support and since 2010, AG1 has been a leader in the future of foundational nutrition, continuously refining their formula to create a smarter, better way to help elevate your baseline health. Look, if you don't want to take 10 different vitamins every day, or maybe it's more, and swallow all these pills, why don't you just take a glass of water, put some of the AG1 powder in it, mix it up, and have a delicious drink to start your day, and know- And you then you're done. And you're done. That's it. Um, Tom, we take it while we travel. 
we do a lot of cons, you get tired, you want your immune system to be strong. And you know, for me, I like to have my gut, I'm stressed when my gut is a mess, because you don't know when you have to go to the bathroom and all this other stuff. So uh, it's it's really important to me. You know, what's cool is that I, I have friends that have actually said to me, wow, you're not messing around because my friends will say, Hey, I know they're your sponsor. And I'm like, dude, I don't take on sponsors unless I believe in them, unless I believe in the product. I'm not going to just, there's a lot of products that we turn down and AG one, something that is just, we know it's good for you. And I could see a difference and it, it makes a difference. So it's easy. And it's nice to hear from my friends when they're like, you know what? I have more energy. I have more focus. It's cool because you don't want your friends to think you're just a lying bastard. You know what I mean, Tom? The sponsors we get, we, we vet them. You know, and we check them out. Do we make sure that they work for us as well? Um, otherwise, we can't talk about them the way yeah. that they even want us to. That's true. Um, there's so many vitamins and and minerals in this thing in one glass of AG1. You just have to try it. There's a reason they've been our sponsor for a long time. AG1 is a supplement I trust to help provide the support my body needs daily, and that's why they've been a partner for so long. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash talkville. That's drinkag1.com slash talkville. Check it out. Chloe goes to meet up with Clark and Pete in the hospital. Clark tries keeping Pete away from Chloe so he doesn't reveal his secret. Instead of doing that, Pete plants a kiss on Chloe and then tells her that he's in love with her. As Pete leaves, Chloe starts having piercing headaches and gets rushed into the hospital room. That was I mean, cool. I it was a good surprise, the kiss. I mean, I I thought that I it went pretty that. well. Yeah. I well, I didn't remember it was gonna happen. And then when it did, I was like, I was kind of like just like Clark. Like, I can't believe that mm -hmm. just happened in front of me. Hmm. And then they started dating for years. No. Later in the torch, Pete talks to Clark about his, uh, his feelings with Chloe and makes a relevant remark about Ask Jeeves. The guy oh, then yeah. diverts their conversation to a certain experiment going on at Luther Corp that could explain Chloe's symptoms, Project Levitas. Back in the hospital, Chloe gets a visit from Lionel. He begins truth bombing about blackballing, blackballing her father so he can't get a job. Chloe then begins recording the conversation, asking Lionel whether or not he was behind his parents' death, and he admits to doing so for their life insurance and then tells her that she has done something very dangerous. Instead of blackmailing him, Lionel flips it on her and blackmails her to get information from the Kents. This was awesome. I thought John was so good in this scene when Chloe says, did you do this? He goes, yes, I did this for insurance. Yes, I killed my parents. I was like, oh my gosh, because I, I, I didn't, <laughs> you know, I never saw an episode. So I didn't know that he, he comes clean with this. And it was, it was like a holy crap moment for me. And it was just also, like so sociopath. And then he says, oh, She also, she's dangerous. got this ace in the hole. But as soon as she's like, I have this recording, I'm like, duh, he's going to get it now. But we know this now. Back then, you don't feel like people can break into your stuff so easily. But yeah. now it's like, of course, he's going to buy the phone company and take it. Mm hmm. Clark goes to search for the doctor previously in charge of the Luther Corp Project Levitas. He finds Dr. Doyle in an abandoned warehouse and in rough shape. Doyle reveals why the project failed and then tells Clark and Chloe will be dead by morning if she is showing symptoms. Clark, that Chloe will be dead because the toxicity is off the charts. Luckily, he has a syringe locked and loaded with an untested cure inside his fridge. Clark takes yeah. this back to the hospital. Yeah. But Chloe's missing. You hear that, Ryan? She's missing. Clark accuses Lionel of resurfacing Levitas and not caring about Chloe's well-being. Lionel says that Clark accusing him of lying is the pot calling the kettle blurk. Clark tells Chloe to try and get her back as she is nodding off while on the road. Mid-conversation, she gets run off the road by Mrs. Taylor's son, who is seeking revenge, upset by the fact that his mother is going to jail and not understanding the irony that he will now be going to jail. He forces her to crash through a bridge, sending her car <laughs> teetering off the edge. They use the same location this, for the pilot. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Same yeah, for the Porsche. The old Pilotio. Pilotio. Yeah, I noticed that. I thought that was kind of cool, though. And the guys who fixed the bridge are like, God Damn it. We fixed this bridge already. <laughs> Not again. Oh, man. Yeah, you know, 
that scene drug out a little, dragged out a little too much. It was just like, boom, yeah. boom, boom. Okay, we get it. We get what's happening. Why do people fly off the handle like that? Okay, his mom's life's ruined, so he should go kill someone. Maybe he was a sociopath all along. Runs in the blood. <laughs> Chloe passes out from the toxicity and Clark rushes in to save the day, grabs Taylor's truck, knocking him out, and then pulls Chloe's Clark, Clark, Chloe's Clark, Chloe's car back down before it can fall. Clark then whips out the syringe, jams her in the chest, and saves her life. I actually really liked the overhead shot and you ripping out the seatbelt and like there's yeah. some cool stuff in there. I was like, this is this is cool. They did that really well, that part. I thought that was really fun to watch. Do you remember anything yeah, from that, I Tom? You know, I don't, and I, I wish I had, because there's that one shot where Clark's holding up the, the whole car, and I thought that was cool, and you could tell we were losing light because all of a sudden, there was so much more, like, obviously light being put on it, so it must have been getting late that day. Um, I don't know why Clark has to slam the the syringe so hard. Well, I think he held back a little because he would have gone through her whole body with his strength. Yeah, but Clark I mean, it, I, you could have literally done reference. this. You could have gone... You could, Dink. yeah, you could have gone. I mean, yeah. you could have used not. You could have used your like nose to do it. But it was a reference from the Tarantino movie, so uh, they were I trying guess it to. Was. All right, well, back in Metropolis, Lionel blows up on Lex for resurfacing a failed project. He tells him that he's losing patience and asks why, what he truly wants. What do you want? What do you want, son? Lex. Instead of telling his father he wants love, Lex turns around. And walks the hell out. If you don't know what I want, then you don't know nothing, Dad. Chloe shows up to Clark's loft to apologize for her behavior and for almost confronting his parents on Lionel's behalf. Clark tries writing it off by saying she wasn't herself, but she's not too sure that he's right. I like that. I like that moment where she's like, you know, I don't, I don't really know myself. You know, I'm. This is what I'm determined to be. I'm going to be a journalist, and I'm going to be big. And anybody in my way, sorry, whoever you are. The episode ends, of course, in the Talon. Lana tells Clark about her planned rendezvous in Paris. She tells him she's Audi, wants a fresh start, and doesn't want him to talk her out about it. Because he's the only person who could. I thought mm -hmm. that was a good line. We get a closing shot of Chloe returning to the torch and learning that Lionel has deleted her recorded voicemail. Why doesn't anybody, if she's such a good journalist, like have a backup? <laughs> she's learning. Is she? That's step one. Have a backup. I agree. Highlights and lowlights. What was the process of direction like for playing the bewildered truth-telling characters? Um, well, you really didn't have to, but uh, I guess the process of direction is you will say it just like you would tell a very good friend who you trust, right? Yeah, you didn't have anybody really break down crying and going, oh my God, here's the truth about me. It was just kind of there it is, laid out there. Yep. I think a highlight was the bridge scene, even though it was, you know, went on a little long. Lots of new sets the last couple of episodes. Got to see a lot of really? new sets, you know. I like the Bell Reeve that mixes things up, makes it the scope of the show bigger. Now we got Bell Reeve, or not Bell Reeve, but we got the hospital where um, he's getting. Is it Bell Reeve? No, it's not Bell Reeve. It's where he's getting all the testing. What was that called? Oh, it's the name of, I forget. They, summer, they say the name summer, of the next summer episode. Hole. Some are old. You know, an atypical freak of the week where it involves someone from the main cast. So that was kind of nice. Interesting things of note. Interesting this is the first episode not note. to feature Jonathan Kent. He's not in it. I'm trying to get a hold of John, too, to come back on this podcast, but I haven't heard back from huh. him. The scientist says the sector Chloe breaks into is sector 1978. 1978 is the year the first Christopher Reeve super movie was released. The security code to access Chloe's voicemail at Cans.com is 124, 1234. Interesting. <laughs> 1234. Marianne <laughs> Taylor's story is very similar to the real life story of Kathleen Salaya, who joined a radical social group, the Symbiani Symbionese Liberation Army, in the early 70s. Salaya was indicted as a group member for blowing up police cars, but lived as a fugitive under the new name of Sarah Jane Olson for almost 25 years, marrying and having children until she was tracked down and arrested in 99. Wow. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Do you look forward to the holidays, folks? Or like most people, do you struggle with staying upbeat around the holidays? It's more common than you may think to not be quite so cheerful and bright. This time of year can be a lot. 
and it's natural to feel some sadness or anxiety about it, but adding something new and positive to your life can counteract some of those feelings. Therapy can be a bright spot amid all the stress and change, something to look forward to and make you feel grounded and give you the tools to manage everything going on, and it's super convenient with BetterHelp. It's entirely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Even during the holidays, just fill out a Got brief it. questionnaire yeah. to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime <laughs> for no additional charge. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Talkville today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Talkville. It's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Talkville. This holiday season, you might be looking for nutritious, convenient meals to keep you energized on jam-packed days. Factor America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service can help you fuel up fast for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle while tackling all your holiday to-dos. Tom, we both have had this. They sent us a bunch of stuff. And, you know, what's great about this, it's these meals, they're fresh. They're not frozen. You can cook them in two minutes. I don't have time. You have kids. We're always traveling. I could have, like, I had like cinnamon pancakes the other day. And then I had like, you know, some broccolini. And I, what I'm saying is I could eat healthy. I could eat stuff that I really want for fun during the holidays. It, they have it all. And it's so convenient because, you know, you go to the, uh, we go to the grocery stores, we get too much stuff and then it sits in the fridge and it rots and you waste money and then you got to throw it all away. Well, you don't even have to go to the grocery store anymore with factor meals. I mean, listen, I think the the key word here is holiday because I'm going to double down uh, with all the running around and all the festivities that happen. This is a perfect way to supplement the way you eat. Um, the meals are great. They're delicious. You want to eat them. And they, like you said, they arrive right at your door. Yeah. And what's great is you could choose from 35 or more weekly flavor packed, fresh, never frozen meals that support a healthy lifestyle and meet your meal preferences, all delivered right to your door and ready to eat in two minutes. I don't know uh, what you're missing out if you don't try Factor. If you're looking for special occasion meals during the holidays, level up with gourmet plus options prepared to perfection by chefs and ready to eat in record time. Enjoy premium ingredients like broccolini, leeks, truffle butter, and asparagus. And when you're too busy running around to plan lunch, Factor has you covered with lunch to go. Effortless, wholesome meals like grain bowls and salad toppers that are ready to eat when you're on the go. No microwave required. Looking for calorie conscious options over the holidays that also taste great? We'll try delicious dietitian approved calorie smart meals with around or less than 550 calories per serving. That's amazing. Need an extra boost to support your wellness goals and feel your best during the holidays? Try Protein Plus. Protein Plus meals have 30 grams of protein or more per serving and enjoy extra convenience any time of the day with an assortment of 45 plus add-ons to suit various preferences and taste. The breakfast items, Tom, delicious. I, I talked about the, the apple cinnamon pancakes, bacon and cheddar egg bites and potato bacon and egg breakfast skillet. Or for an easy wellness boost, try refreshing beverage options like cold pressed juices, shakes, and smoothies. And I, I have those. I always order extra of those because you're on the run. You don't even have time. You don't even have time for the two minute meals. You grab a cold pressed juice. This November, get Factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor packed meals delivered to your door ready in just two minutes. No prep, no mess, no chopping, no cutting up stuff, no going to the grocery store. It's that easy. Head to factormeals.com slash Talkville50 and use code Talkville50 to get 50% off. That's code Talkville50. Factormeals.com slash Talkville50 to get 50% off. Uh, now it's time for the hotline. Let's Talk get to the hotline. All right, this is video patron privilege. This is Karen M. We're going to get right into it. We're just going to get, we're diving. We're diving into this. Here we go. Hi, Karen. 
Hi guys, Karen Apple M from Australia with a question for season three truth. Boy, those non-verbal communications are really happening in that episode. How hard was it to keep a straight face when you had to do all that fancy eye contact? Thanks. That's a good question because I know in that elevator scene, there's a shot where you're looking through Pete and Chloe and you see Clark and the way, they, the way that they move out and the way the camera moves in and the way that my eyes shift, I guarantee you that was Marshall saying, when they do this, look over here and look over there. And, you know, it's it's fun to joke around on set with your friends when these out of character moments are happening. But when the camera's rolling, it's, you know, it's you, you get in pretty focused. Yeah, it's tedious. You got you to gotta focus on that stuff. Aaron, what's Aaron up to? Ryan's going to answer this one, whether it's directed towards one of us or not. <laughs> what was it like on set? No, Ryan, you're going to answer this one. Hey, question. this is Aaron Andrew from Pittsburgh, PA. My question is for season three, episode 20, Truth. So Chloe gets exposed to this kryptonite that allows her to get people to tell her the truth, but it doesn't work on Clark. But if it's kryptonite that made her able to do this, shouldn't it affect Clark more? Like, shouldn't he be the most truthful? Anyway, I love the show. Well, that was, Thanks, guys. Aaron, you're a genius. I didn't even think the, of that. That was sort of the breath thing, too, where Clark would be like, Chloe, what the? <laughs> you know it would have been great Whoa. what's that kryptonite on your breath I kind of want to <laughs> oh I got kryptonite breath you know I hate that oh man I I want you know in this particular instant I kind of wish that Chloe once she came to she forgot everything she had done because I would have loved to seen Clark go I'm from Krypton I'm brought here to earth I'm all these things blah 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 and then Chloe's just dumbfounded. And then Clark's like, and she's like, I don't even know, you know, and they're, they could have done something with the story where you're going to, she's going to leak this story. But then she, she actually says, I'm not going to do this. You have my allegiance. And yeah. then she, she knows with Pete. I feel like Lex is playing that card this season though, where like he kind of knew and then does he still remember? Doesn't he? But mm -hmm. Chloe, there's no way Chloe could have learned from her mistakes if she'd forgotten everything. Ah. I bet this is going to be a real zinger right here. Maria G from Dallas, Texas. Just a quick comment. I loved how this episode highlighted the differences between several characters by just showing how they each reacted to their truth. So, for example, Pete was embarrassed and angry. Lex was a lot more in control, but still showed some pain and sadness. But then that Lionel, that guy did not even miss a beat and immediately shifted the blame to Chloe. Quick shout out to Ryan. Ryan, your favorite scene segment is truly my favorite part of the show. Anyways, thanks. Bye. Her fa the fa favorite part of the show is your favorite scene. Well, that's nice. Thank you. How about that, Marion? Yeah, we talked about that. Um, the dynamic of, of of just people how you know reacting differently, realizing they were telling the truth. It was uh, it was all different, and it all worked. It was all like, oh my gosh! Like I felt their pain in each of them, except for Lionel. Like you say, Lionel was kind of just sort of like the sociopath he is and always will be. Uh, yeah, he owned it. Shamoy. Is it Shamoy? Did we sound that right? Shamoy. You say Shamoy, I say Shamoy. Hey, this is Shamoy from Queens, New York, and my question is for Season 3, Episode 18, Truth. We see Clark drop the antidote into Chloe's chest, but wouldn't that puncture her heart, especially given his super string? Any thoughts on this? Thanks. Love your podcast. Yeah, we talked about that. We we just assumed that Clark didn't do super speed, super strength, and um, yeah, because yeah, he would have busted her chest right open, but he didn't. I mean, I'd like to think it was just more of an emotional effort, but I mean, he he brings it up over his head. I know he's like, <laughs> by the powers of Grayskull. And would we have liked it? Like, if Clark was like this, he goes, <gasps> and then add a shot of Clark stopping like in millimeter, and then just going. Like, would we really have liked that? I don't know. I think if you just put it up and just went, that could have been effective. But look, it's what's done is done. What's done is done. Listen to me. It's done. Name that voice. Listen to me. Sean Connery. Is it? Sean Sounds Connery. like it when you say it. He speaks like this. Much money, Penny. Much money, Penny. Sean. This is Bob. What you got, Bob? Bob's a palindrome. Bob spelled backwards is still bad. Hey, guys. Nick's in New York. I got a question on truth if it's not too late. In the beginning, Clark is uh, carrying groceries, and it looks like 
He's holding them by the side, making the package look very light. I wonder if that was a conscious choice. Probably. The bags that they actually use on set aren't actually paper bags. They're a lot thicker. But I, I did try to think about those things as far as... It looked really it, light. Yeah, I it remember. probably was. was like, it looked like but, it was so light, like a feather light. But you're <laughs> Clark Kent. These, this is, I mean, you, you pull yeah. those big wooden planks out of the ground and shit. So, Brian P. Hey, gents. It's Brian C., a patron from Albuquerque, New Mexico. I'm calling today about Season 3, Episode 18, Truth. Uh, they say absolute power corrupts absolute. We get a glimpse of what Chloe would really do with that type of power. Do you, do you find it odd that the writers would make Chloe seem so absolutely shitty in this episode? I don't really see how she could be seen as redeemable after she shows her true colors. Anyway, I'd love to, love to hear your thoughts. Oh, and Michael, you sounded a little stuffy during this episode. Do you recall if you had a cold? Thanks, guys. I don't remember, but I, may, I might have. It's Vancouver, for God's sakes, Brian. I mean, it's always well, cold I, and rainy, and I'm bald, so... Probably had a cold. My sinuses are always a mess anyway. Although they've been I mean, better. There's a... I, I was sniffing for years and, and I finally got them under control somewhat. It's also what you eat. There's that scene that there's that scene in the barn with Chloe and Clark, and Clark says you weren't yourself, and I think she pretty much says, No, I was, and that's that's the problem. That's yeah. what I'm addressing, and that, that makes her it makes it easier to forgive her that she's doesn't want to be that person. I don't know how likable her character really is, to be honest with you. I, I think there's been moments where you like her and feel sorry for her. And then, like he says, there's moments like this where you're like, I, she, I don't know if she's a good person. I think she's trying to be one, but she's still aware and she's still not going to let anything get in her way. I, I don't know how I feel about it. What do you feel, Ryan? You're mixed. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they sure want her to seem like a good person, just the way they write her. But um, the things that she's willing to do that is that have now come to light. She's driven, you know, and I think that is, you know, she's career focused. Would you date her in high school? No, Tom. Um, I don't think so. I mean, she she wouldn't have time for anyone. Mm -hmm. That's, That's kind of her deal. Yeah, and she'd tell everybody, "Oh, so and so's got a small wiener." I'm a journalist. I say everything I. I say the truth. Well, what do you want me to lie about it? Yes, I do. For the sake of my future dates. Oh my gosh. <laughs> my dad. How could you? I hear my dad having sex every night with someone else. No. <laughs> Leanne. Spot on Chloe impression. Spot on Chloe. Okay, this is Leanne. Leanne, this is going to be a good one, Leanne. Here we go. Hey guys, it's Leanne P., your patron from Sacramento, calling about the episode Truth Season 3. So when Lex admits to Chloe that he will never get the one thing he wants from his father, which is for Lionel to love him, for me, it definitely cemented my feeling of I am so Team Lex. Wondering how y'all felt about that and the delivery of it, and if you now like Lex Luthor even more. Thanks, guys. Bye. Yeah, I think, you know, I felt for him. I felt like, gosh, this is sad. He just wants his father to love him. And, you know, um, I think in the next episode, you're going to figure out why and what happened. And it's, you know, uh, but what do you guys think? Bombshell. No, <laughs> me, bombshell. no, I mean, we talked about it a little bit. No, what happens in the ne next episode no, I'm is talking a big about bombshell, which yeah. is me. It is a bombshell. But um, do you think you feel no, for I, Lex, Clark, or Tom when you're watching it? Yeah. Ryan? Yeah, I did. Okay. You you play him sympathetically. I think that's the idea, at least in these first few seasons, because it, Lionel's yeah. a real bad guy. I think it's mixed emotions. It's ambiguity, but it's also like, I think he has a heart, and I also think he does things, and then he gets in too deep, and he has ulterior motives, but he doesn't. Like, he's trying to find the truth in certain ways that he doesn't feel, feel like it's a bad thing, but then it hurts other people, but he doesn't know why. Why are you upset that I'm looking into this accident with the car why are you these are things these are anomalies like anybody would like if they saw a ufo they'd want to find more information and wait is this what i saw is this like how did this happen i can't get it out of my head can you understand yeah do whatever you want do whatever you want to figure it out man but clark's got a secret and so he doesn't want lex to, to do this nor do the kents so ultimately lex is a bad guy for doing what any other person would do in most cases Good question, man. Hey, Michael and Tom, this is John. My question is for Michael. Michael, uh, I always love the Lex and Lionel scenes. What preparation would you and John get into in terms of blocking for a scene? Thanks, guys. 
Um, we'd read the scene, we'd block it, we'd come up with ideas, we'd um if there was any fruit in the room, then John would go grab it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> any alcohol, I'd grab it. There's a lot, yeah, there's a lot of scotch pouring. We were just seeing how we can go back and forth. A little yin and yang, a little what is it called? A little uh volleyball. Does he do? Yeah, well, it's just kind of like, all right, what's the agenda here? What do we want to get? You know, my I want to get to you through to you that you know, I'm just, I'm your son. Treat me like your son, for God's sakes. And he doesn't, and he has these reasons why. And so we all have our agendas. So I don't know. It's a tough one. Meredith. Meredith, what you got here? Hey, this is Meredith calling from Abu Dhabi. In the episode Truth, there's a cool shot early on in the episode where Chloe's walking through the halls. Uh, the other students are all glaring at her, and Clark is a scene from behind another student. Uh, that shot really stood out to me as something that could have been just another simple character entrance instead becoming a really creative transition. Just wanted to give kudos. Really enjoying the podcast, guys. Thanks, Meredith. Thanks for that. There so, you yeah, go, that James was cool. Marshall. Yeah, probably give it to Marshall on that one, the director. Here are some questions from Caitlin. How do you think Clark or Lex would have used the ability to make people tell the truth, and how would it differ from the way you personally you personally would or wouldn't use it? If I can get the truth from people... I don't think I would. You know what? I interview my mom and dad. And I'd say, I'd ask these questions. And I, because I want them to admit things that I think they haven't. And I would also, <laughs> I wouldn't do anything with my friends. I wouldn't try to get anything from them. But like girls, I would like, do you like me? Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Now I feel better. All right. Well, you and I just recently <laughs> joked about this at the at the at the lunch table at one of the cons about being so honest the first time you meet a girl. What would that would really look like? You know, like really honest. Like I just want you to know this about me and whatever that is. The girl, you wouldn't get that date. I bet. You know what? <laughs> though like, I do this all the time. Like I did this when I was doing stand up. I'd say. Well, you know, they say it's the six month rule. They say six months and you'll finally get to know the person. Why are we waiting six months? Here I am. I shit with the door open. I wear sweatpants. I uh, get, you know, I would go through the list. Th this is what I do. This is how I am. A little ADD. I like horror movies. I like that. This is me. And then they're like, like all right, we'll see you. Good talking. <laughs> shit with the door open, huh? I don't always do that, but I occasionally do it when, just when the guys are here. Rosenbaum ratings. And now. We're going to go with Rosenbaum Tom on this one. Rating. I think it's just a heater. Nothing. I mean, it just didn't really. really. Yeah. Ryan. I agree. It is also a heater. I'm going to give it a half a rose. Oh. I thought it was better. Oh. Than a heater. Hmm. I thought oh, wow. it was better than a heater. It kept my attention and seeing like Martha tell the truth and Pete tell the truth and all it in Lex. It was just, it made it interesting to see what they were really thinking for the first time we really got to see them transparently. <laughs> I liked it. I liked that. You know, I was just thinking it could have been funny is if there was a scene with Pete after the elevator kiss where like Clark's talking about Pete's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Nope. I don't remember that. It didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> nope. That would have been good. Uh, death and save, death count. And save count. Zero dead. One saved. Clark saves Chloe from being run off a bridge. 18 episodes, season three, 27 dead, 28 saved. 86 dead in the series, 98 saved. There it is. Ryan's favorite Ryan's scene. Favorite Ryan's going to write down scene. three scenes, and we'll guess which one is his favorite. It's one of Callie that uh, I don't know who's in first this year. I don't know That's if it's close. harder to judge the favorite scene when the episode's good or when it's bad. I guess it's harder when it's good because there's all there's so many there's so many good options. Scenes. But yeah. Uh, okay. I, I have a feeling I know what this one is. But these ones are, are tough because there's, there's not as many uh, like apex like if I scenes. guess it right now, if we can guess no. it both, do we get an extra point? Each of us get to guess? Sure. All right, you go ahead, Tom. Guess? Okay. guess before you even say anything. You can say yes or no. I can't really think of anything. It's tough. I bet, uh, you're gonna, I, I bet it's going to be one of the truths. I think it's going to be either Lex. Tr I, I'm going to say the scene with Lionel, Chloe and Lionel. I'm going to say Lex saying he just wants his dad to love him. Ryan. Do you want to say what? Which no, one? I want you to say if we're right about your favorite, and if not, then you'll read them off, and then we'll each guess. One of you is right. All right, cool. One of us is right. 
All right. Well, so, scene, scene one is uh, Lex just wants love. Okay. Scene two is Lionel's confession about his parents. And scene three is uh, Clark in the syringe. Okay, so we know it's one of the first two. So one of us is going to get th- two, two or three. All right, so you me, you or me, me or you, gosh, bless. We got two <laughs> points already, <laughs> one of us, and now we're going to guess. So what do you guess, Tom? Well, can I change my guess and get? Yeah, and get at least get a point. I can yeah. change now? Because he did like the Lionel thing, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with uh, my, my original choice, Lex wanting to be loved. I'm going to say it's Lionel. Yeah, Lionel. Yes, I got three oh. points. Three. Bryce, Jeez. write that shit down. Three <laughs> points. Dude, Darn that it. was awesome. I could have got zero, but you oh. did. <laughs> you got zero. <laughs> Darn. I Woo! was going to change. <laughs> Here comes the rain again. Walking on my head like rain doesn't walk on your head. That's it for the episode. Stick around <laughs> next week God. as we remember season three, episode 19. Guys, this is a glorious episode. and We have some special guests. It's called Memoria. Yeah. Let's take the discussion online. Let us know your thoughts on the episode over on our socials at Talkable Podcast or <laughs> Talkable Pod. Show your support for the podcast by joining Patreon at patreon.com slash Talkville. And if you want more info, look in the my, my bio, look in the, uh, the you know social handles. It's all there. You can go to my link tree, see where we're going for cons, cameo. I got my live podcast, but I think that's already gone by this point. We won't talk about that. And Ryan, why don't you say it? It's your turn. Why don't you say, is it your turn or did you say it last time? I don't recall. Why don't you say it? But mean it. I want you to mean it, Ryan. Remember, folks, always hold on to Smallville. All right. Now it's time for the uh, big shout outs. The big, big shout outs are top tier patrons. Patreon.com slash Talkville. Could not do it without you guys. You know that. You're the reason we're here, and we love you. And Tom, take us off. Take us, take us off. I would like to start off, start us off with Nikki G, Leanne P, Raj C. Thank you for your long message. Santiago M, Lita Lisa, Thomas Elite Floor, Sophie M, Betsy D, Abhi P, Ray H, Karen Apple M, Danielle B, ninety nine more, Leilani, and Brett G. Always hold on to Smallville. Esteban G, DJ Kento in the house. Garrett W, Kimberly L, Tom N, Jason W, Osama, what up, A, Lana Rhymes with Banana, W, Nancy D, Brian G, Sarah W, Amanda R, Teddy127, Michael P, Theo M, Ryan R, Jordan M, Hillary B, Randy B, of course you are, Craig G, Christy R, Karen P, Jorel, hi, Deb, Heather and Craig, great meeting you in DC, Nico P, I made Talkville say but. Brian H, Eric K, Kristen B, Craig C, Nanine W, Stephanie K, Darth, Achilles, Finky, Tamara H, Stephen F, damn, who's that? Jeanette E, Deadvid, General Zod, Big D, Doug R. Carlos C, gosh, I thought you were going to read all of them for God's sakes, which is fine. I, I was thinking about it. You're doing it and just waved to the camera. Tommy Z, Boston 68, Ken the Limerick Guy, Coriel, Mr. Home Arcade. What are you playing, Pac Man? A little Qbert? Amanda K, Jesse C, Claire M, D Brown, Karen Era M, D- L Down, Supremo, Dan, good seeing you when you were in LA, Leslie V, McBurts, Ginger Moose, Christoph S, Michelle M, Drew, Brittany S, Marisol P, Michael Kang doesn't blink. Why don't you say Michael Kang doesn't blink, Ryan? You like doing that? Get your kid. Michael Kang. Oh, you're, he's, his mic's not on. Sebastian F, Sourpuss Cranky Pants, Matthew and Lincoln B, The Coopers, Mary and Louise L, CGO, Cindy C, Nikki L, Big Bash Bosch's Lemon Pledge. They brought me Lemon Pledge at the uh, con in Orlando. Thank you. Shannon. Do you use it? Them. Yeah, my butt. Can Can you take that on the plane? I should. I got to tell you what happened to me. Oh, I was peeing a few minutes ago. Brian S, Tina E, Matt R, Jen T, Cassie B, Felicia R, Dan M, D S, the R N, J S, Rachel D, Ginger Primus, and Nate D. When you're rich, you aren't crazy. You're eccentric. Paul W, Jonas One, Samantha S, Derek Starkville, Spicy Brown says. Sounds like my pants. Carrie Ann, the Alexander Castle, Daryl E, Kyle F, Charlene A, and Spice a Chicken. Oh, yeah. Good. Love me some spice that you get. We, uh, mm. we thank you guys dearly. Thanks for listening to the podcast. We hope you have a great week. Good day.